Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, it's Michael Trabin's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Prime Time Avenger 26 BBS travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, you're going to leave plenty of room for that awning to come out. On your off campsite, beside your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power and water are way back in this rear corner. Um, power is back in the rear corner on your driver's side, and your water on the rear corner on your off camp side. So, park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Water and power at the rear. Once you get a good parking spot, first thing you do is level our hitch. Your unit comes with a hand crank. Right will bring it up, left will bring it down. Once we got our unit level, we're going to stabilize it. All four corners of the unit have these scissor stabilizing jacks. Three quarter inch hand crank. You can use a drill gun or an impact driver. Uh, if you do, I recommend you slow down when you get to the bottom. So all we're going to want to do is bring these down to their taunt. I'm going to recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer, keep them from sinking into the ground. Run these down just until you've got some tension on your hand crank. Remember, all we're trying to do is stabilize it. We've already got it level and you don't want to change that levelness. Bring all four of those down on each corner. Got the unit level and stable. We can hook up our power and water. Again, your power cord back over here in this rear corner. Big long 30 amp cord. Plugs in back here in this rear corner. Actually stores in here is plugged in inside. When you leave the campsite, just push it all right back up in there. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need to plug in to a 110 somewhere, your convenience pack will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Power hook up, let's hook up our water. Again, camp sites, we're gonna hook up to city water. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when hooking up your water. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up, hook up your hose. Don't turn on your hose yet. We got one more step. Hot water heater. All we're going to do is make sure our drain plug's back in here. May have left it out last time you were camping. Get that back in there nice and snug. That's an inch and an eighth socket. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose has been on for a little bit, go inside and open up that slide. I need you to get inside and open up your water lines. Get all them opened up, get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Get all the air out of the lines. Once the air is out of the lines, you'll know that your hot water heater is full. Shut those taps off, then you can turn this on from indoors. Let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to hook up to a campsite. We're going to go dry camping boondocking as we like to call it in that case we're simply going to fill up our fresh water tank located on your off camp side toward the front no need for a water pressure regulator here we're going to gravity fill this with a hose two ways to tell it's full one there's an overflow valve right here or two on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks there's also a button for your fresh water don't leave this unattended while you're filling it once it's full put your cap back on and then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your 
your uh, water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water. That is already pressurized. All right, we're all set up for power and water. Let me walk you around the rest of the unit. Continue here on your off camp side. Big pass through storage. Your fresh water again. Here's your fresh water drain. That blue right there. Say flue for your furnace. Two things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. And two, if you are running it, steer clear of it. It does get hot. I recommend on your slides, they have a spray that you can put on these seals. Keeps them nice and pliable. Keeps them from dry rotting over the years. Get you some of that. Over here's where we we'll dump our black and gray tanks. Here's our storage. Again, our power. As we plug in your cable and satellite. Your hot water heater. City water. That's an out, outdoor hot and cold shower. Your low point drain. Dump those when leaving the campsites. Leash link. You can put your pet there. We'll run your awning out here shortly. This is uh, access to the back of your fridge. A couple of outdoor speakers with a vent for your microwave in the middle. A couple of 110s out here. That about covers everything on the outside. We'll go up front to your propane. It does have a regulator on it. Of course, Lefty Lucy. Yeah, are prepped for solar as well. You can plug in a solar panel right here, and that will trickle charge your batteries. All right, let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure you and everyone is camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Up here to the left is our lighting, awning light, awning control, slide control. Let's do that awning real quick. All right, so on your awning, you only want to run that out until you can see your silver bar. If you hold that button down, that will start to run itself out and back up onto itself. So make sure you uh, keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Run back in here. I've got that in. Let's go ahead and close this. Continue our tour. Storage here. Come around inside the unit. Got some one touch lighting. 110 there. Do you have light and fan above your cooktop? Panel light. Fold this glass top back. Turn that to light. Hit your spark when your gas is on. That'll light up for you. Same thing on the oven. Turn that to light, hit your spark, that will light it, and then turn it to the desired temperature. No pilot light anymore. On your Dometic fridge, turn a few more of these lights in here. Up top, turn it on. Right now we're in auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift up on this button, now you're just on gas. And if that light comes on, your gas is low. Usually keep it on. Auto. In your bathroom area here, you got a 110 with GFCI reset. A little plumbing to maintain. Uh, access panel here. You are bouncing the house down the road, so keep an eye on your plumbing. Make sure nothing wiggles loose over time. Back in our bathroom. Here's our control panel. Turn on our hot water heater here. Right there. Down here. Um, your brand new battery. Here's where you check your fresh black and gray tanks. And here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Again, this is lights. You have a hand crank open power exhaust vent here. Coming back out to our bunk areas, have their own individual lighting and USB ports. Coming back out below our fridge is your breaker box, access panel, bunch of 15s in there, a couple of 40 fuses. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. 
This is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned this 12 volt, always running off your battery. But I did not see a battery disconnect on this. So if you are out dry camping, boondocking somewhere, and you're going to be gone the entire day, it's going to run your battery down while you're gone. So I recommend you disconnect one of your battery posts, preferably the positive, to keep this run your battery down while you're gone. Continuing into our living room. On the corner here, you're all prepped for a TV. Your dinette. Table will wiggle up and off these bars. You can pull these bars out as well. Set your table on this wooden lip right here. All the way around, put some back cushions on top. That'll give you another sleeping quarters. Over here, we have a jackknife. Jackknife that down for bed. No storage up underneath. Turn the wall is your thermostat. Crank your air up real quick. You hear that run? Put your air off. Turn up the heat. Your furnace on. Get that running. Shut that off. Now your furnace fan takes a couple minutes to cycle through before it actually shuts off. So you'll hear that running for a couple more minutes. One touch lighting in our bedroom. Here's your antenna. You will crank this um, to the left for travel. All the way to the right to bring it up. All the way left to bring it down. USB 110 is here. Got some storage up underneath your bed, accessible from outdoors. One other thing, make sure this bedroom door is snapped open for travel. And you're prepped for a TV. Cable 110, you got a backer in here. That about covers everything on the inside. So I mentioned more plumbing here underneath your sink to keep an eye on so now I come to my main control panel and shut off my lights then I see all the other lights are individual lighting I need to walk through the unit and shut off Don't want all these lights on while you're traveling down the road. Make sure your vents are closed. After I do all the lights, I say doors and drawers. After all these lights are done, I'll turn on my lights to my control panel. And say doors and drawers. Make sure all your doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. We're going to hit slide in. As your slide gets to all the way in, here are kitchen lights and exit the unit. On these steps, make sure your door is left all the way open, otherwise, this will catch on it. You also have adjustable feet, adjustable by this cotter pin. See how close that comes there. Let's get it in, turn and lock that. Lock and deadbolt your door. Now you may want to wait until you leave the dump station before you do that. Yeah, we got if we are out dry camping, we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks, come around here and open up that fresh water drain. Otherwise at campsites, we're gonna unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the hook dump station. At the dump station, park accordingly. You dumps all the way behind the rear tires on your off camp side. Hook that up, 
and pull through the right handle. That's going to be your sewer outlet. It's going to be your black tank. When that black tank is done, you're going to close that handle and pull your gray one. While your gray is draining, that's when I like to come around and dump my freshwater drains. Open them up. When them are empty, if you're done camping for the season, dump your hot water heater. Get in here, lift up on this pressure release valve. That's going to dump the hot water out like so. When that's done, push down on that handle, then you can pull your drain plug for the residual hot water that's left in there. Doesn't hurt that any of this gets wet. When that's done, come back around here. Close that gray handle. That'll be clean the water. That'll clean your sewage hose out. Cover your bumper. And conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose inside your bumper. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Avenger for many years to come. Happy camping.